If you're struggling to get your classroom online, you've come to the right place. My job is to help you get your classroom online as quickly and as easily as possible. Your school board has provided you with a learning management system that is D2L, Moodle, or WebCT. This is a repository of all your teaching materials. Think of it like a building in which your classroom is housed. The most effective thing that you can do is to get all your teaching materials into the building. Now, learning management systems like D2L have lots of bells and whistles. You can easily get distracted by those bells and whistles and fail to focus on what's important. What's important is the content. That is the stuff that you create. Learning management systems are not a great place to be creative and try and be um, dress things up. You wouldn't try and dress up the school you're in, you dress up your classroom. Right now what you need to do is get your materials into your classroom. And you want to do that with a minimum of fuss without having to learn a bunch of new software. You want to get your classroom materials, that is your assignments, your quizzes, your tests, your worksheets, your notes, whatever you happen to have, whatever makes your classroom tick, you want to get those things into your classroom as quickly as possible. And it doesn't matter whether those materials are exist right now as digital materials. If you're an analog person, and there's nothing wrong with that, students engage with handwritten notes, hand-drawn charts, whatever. So if you have a lot of paper materials, don't worry, you're going to be able to get your materials online very quickly. One of the keys to getting your classroom online quickly and efficiently is to take what you already know, like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, what, what, it doesn't matter if you're using OpenOffice or you're using WordPerfect, whatever software you're using to create your worksheets, your tests, your notes, or whatever, those things are fine. You basically want to do these um, export PDF copies of these documents. And that's easy. All you do is, I'll show you um, a screen capture in a minute, but basically what you do is you go File, Export, Save as PDF. Now, when you get started, you're only going to have a few documents, but before long you're going to have dozens of documents. Eventually you're going to have hundreds of documents. So right now, think a little bit about your filing system so that going forward, you can keep your material organized. You can go by classroom, um, grade, subject material, uh, subject um, unit, whatever makes sense to you. And you want to put in these folders both the original document that, that is, it could be a Word document. I'm going to keep going back to Microsoft Word because that's what most people use. I use OpenOffice because it's free and I'm cheap, as many teachers are. Um, you just use those materials and you want to save the original and you want to save the PDF in the same folder. And you want to save it with the same name. And you can say, well, won't that be confusing? No. The file extension of the original document will be, say for Microsoft Word, would be .doc. And the file extension for the 
uh, PDF version will be .pdf. So what your computer, whether it's Mac or PC, will do is put them right together so they're easy to find if you've given them the same name. Now, if you've got a computer where you can't see the file extensions and lots of computers have this turned off and maybe you want to think about that, but it's still not a big problem because what they will do is assign an icon to the document. So you'll see the Microsoft Word version with a little Microsoft Word icon and the PDF version with a little PDF sign. So you'll never get confused. When you're working with scans, your worksheets, your diagrams, your notes, whatever it happens to be, you're going to scan them. And you don't have to be a scan wizard. Most of us have a printer at home, and that printer has also got a scanner on it. And that's going to be good enough for what we do. That is, what a teacher needs to get their assignments, their worksheets, whatever it happens to be, online. Now, when it comes directly from the scanner, it's probably going to be saved as a JPEG. Now, JPEG is a very universal file format, but you're not going to put that online. You're going to save that. That's the original document. So if you have to go in and draw a little circle or arrow around something or erase something and correct it, you can do that as a JPEG. Then you're going to save it as a PDF. And that's what you're going to upload to the Internet. Now, why do you want to upload things uh, as PDF when you could upload a Microsoft Word document or a, a JPEG? Well, first off, your Microsoft Word documents and anything like that is not universal. That is, some students won't be able to open it. If they don't have the same version of Microsoft Word as you do, it won't open. Or it'll open and there'll be all kinds of formatting problems. Perhaps they don't have any version of Microsoft Word as, at all. Because Microsoft Word uh, and the whole Microsoft Office Suite costs money. Now, most teachers get it free from their school board, but... Uh, you may be working at home and you don't have that on your computer. So if you convert your uh, Open Office documents or WordPerfect documents or your JPEGs and save them as PDFs, they're going to be instantly viewable by any student on any device. It doesn't matter what computer they have, Mac or PC, how big or small. It doesn't matter. They have a tablet a phone, they can open it all. And if they have access to a printer, when they print it, it will print exactly the way you created it. You can't say that for JPEGs or for other types of documents. PDFs have been around for a long time. I have PDFs which I created over 20 years ago they still display exactly the way I created them. Going forward, if you are a PDF user, right now it's just, PDF stands for Portable Document Format. It's basically like electronic paper. PDF has a lot more capacity to it than simply display and print. You can get it to read your documents out loud. You can use it to create forms. There's a dozens of different features. Don't worry about that. In the future, you have access to that. It's kind of like going back to your learning management system. You have a lot of bells and whistles in there. You can do your attendance. You can have drop boxes and allow the kids to hand in their assignments. You can do quizzes that mark themselves, there is, you can have uh, forums where the students can discuss what they're learning. These are all nice things, but the most important thing is you get your classroom online. That is, 
What is your classroom? Your classroom is essentially every one of those Word documents, every one of those handouts. While you're waiting to um, get your little instructions as to how the repository works, how your D2L works, you can be creating right here, right now, at home, you can be creating those PDFs. And when it comes time to upload them to your D2L shell, you're going to be ready. And it's going to go much faster and much easier. You got to start small. I learned a long time ago, teach people what they need to know when they need to know it. Your first step, create PDFs of all your essential teaching materials. This is Photoshop. Sometimes in some programs you'll go to File Export, but in Photoshop you go File Save As. Here we go. And then um, it'll ask you where to put it, and you're going to select Photoshop PDF. And uh, that will create your PDF. This is a student worksheet. Um, in, uh, I've got Open Office here, and this is more conventional. It goes File, Save As. And there's a bunch of options here. I'm just going to ignore them and uh, create the PDF. And uh, that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a question in the comments or email me.